All right, with that, see Tom's getting his uh, screen up. All right, uh, do you see my screen, Kevin? I do see your screen, all good. Terrific, all right. So we're gonna do a short demonstration of Umbrella. Uh, so, you know, this is the Umbrella dashboard. One of the things you get with it when you buy Umbrella is a full dashboard, which gives us a ton of visibility both on URLs and where the users are going, plus what applications they're using. And then there's different policies you could set for different types of users. So the solution could integrate into Active Directory if you want. Uh, the Secure Web Gateway could actually integrate with uh, uh, Microsoft Azure. So there are different levels of product of, as Kevin mentioned. For example, if I expand policies here, DNS policies are going to be all about that when you get the first two tiers of umbrella, it's DNS layer security. And that's where a lot of customers are currently buying umbrella. But now there are firewall and web policies if you get the secure internet, uh, the SIG essentials product, as they call it. Uh, so let's take a quick look through here. Right now, I'm just on the overview screen here. And if I come down, you can see there's different announcements. They actually have a threat lens built into Umbrella to, to, that's relatively new to see active threats, a little separate than a lot of the other data. And they even have one specifically built to show if you have any connections that are compromised by the SolarWinds breach. Uh, I could click that and then it will go out and show that uh, I don't uh, have any, luckily. This is actually my network I'm managing uh, back at a my demonstration facility that I mentioned I have. So this is showing this year, I could expand it, maybe say do the last 30 days, uh, and I don't have any uh, uh, you know, solar winds breach, which is nice. Uh, I could back up one, and now it's looking at any backdoor attacks uh, to see if any compromised machines are making outbound connections. And again, luckily, uh, I do not have any of that. Uh, if I go back to overview, uh, and set it for, say, 30 days, there are some things happening. Now, I don't have a lot of users in the office, and that, because it's a demonstration facility, not all the computers are being managed by me, but even with a small amount of computers and just other network equipment, in 30 days, there's still over uh, 7.6 million DNS requests with hardly anyone in the office are using this. It's any piece of equipment can be protected in the office and any roaming device can be protected. And that's huge because they're all chatting about all kinds of little things. Every little service on your Windows machine likes to go out on the internet and check things. Uh, and you wanna make sure that they can't go to bad sites. That's the primary thing here. So you could do bad sites based on the fact that they're malicious Plus, based on the fact that you want to block things by policy also. So right here, uh, you know, there was uh, over a thousand blocks, 61 of them were malicious blocks, actually. Uh, so a lot of the people browsing are going to places that actually are just violating policy, actually, not necessarily malicious. So this I actually clicked, and now I can see uh, different destinations, URLs, um, you know, that are malicious. So these were all blocked. That's the internal IP address right here. Uh, you could integrate into uh, Umbrella into Meraki or into your DNS. Uh, I'm doing both, of course. There's, uh, so this shows me the different uh, ways the data was collected, which, you know, is good for me understanding my own network. Uh, if I scroll over, uh, you could see some of these are actual malware, uh, these URLs, and they uh, are blocked. Right now we're just looking at blocked. I could take that off, uh, well, and put in allowed. Now that's actually now gonna show all URL traffic. Uh, so I could see where everyone's going and I can uh, you know, click on any of these. Like here's someone going to uh, Google perhaps, uh, things like that. Uh, now if I go back to the first overview screen and scroll down a little more, you're gonna see something called application discovery. This was added by that CloudLock acquisition Kevin talked about. It's showing in the last 90 days, this one where it's 90 days, 
Uh, over 1,500 cloud applications were in use, again, in my demonstration facility. Most people don't realize it until they get a product like this, just how many applications are in use on their network, many of them going down. These are web applications, many of them. So I click that, and now it's showing me uh, at the top here, very high risk and high risk. And some of these are completely legitimate and nothing wrong with them, but they can still be risky if the wrong person's using them. Like Rhombus here or Adobe Conferencing, there's nothing wrong with those. Now, some of these might have problems. Uh, I'm not sure what this ex.co is. I'm going to click that. And then it goes in and basically I have the option right here to say I want to block it. Uh, you know, I could set block on different policies and say that it's not approved. Uh, and then save that, um, and then that will block anyone to going to it uh, in the future if it wasn't already blocked. But, but this could come in and show me uh, the reputation of the product and if it has any business relevance uh, and if there's any vendor compliance. So some of these will have compliance ratings. This one does not have any, uh, but it goes in depth on every application uh, that's listed here and it's actually quite vast. Uh, now I just went back to the kind of the main application screens and you see it's breaking down some of the most risky at top. Anonymizers are a way for end users to buy, try to bypass your security. Um, you know, and this is showing some anonymizers that are trying to be in use. Here's a fun one, Genius Monkey. Uh, I believe I'm blocking that also. Um, you know, so there's all kinds of policies you can set and categories, both for applications and for URLs, for content. So for example, I just went to content categories. I'm going to go into one of them here. And these are the typical content categories you could, we can figure to do web content filtering. So I'm blocking an assortment. You could do the same thing for applications and then block ones you don't want. I just mentioned anonymizers. Uh, here's a whole bunch of them. They're always adding more, too. Uh, so every month I notice more get added. Some of them are legitimate. I'm probably not going to block Aruba and AnyConnect, uh, but I might block uh, some of these others, for example. Um, and the list is vast. This is just anonymized. Knows, anonymizers knows how many are in here. You know, I'm doing my work. Uh, you know, I don't want to have to come back and do this. So I figured I'd do this right now and hit save. Uh, there we go. And I just saved that, actually. So Umbrella also is very easy to administer and manage and easy to deploy. Uh, so that's the quick demonstration on Umbrella. That's something that, you know, if someone wants more time, you could uh, ask, and uh, we'd be happy to help out on a longer Umbrella demonstration. But it's excellent at helping remote users not going to bad sites. And think of other things, too, like phishing. If you click a link and it's a phishing link, Umbrella will help block you from going to that phishing link so you don't get compromised. Um, with that, I'm going to...